can I have a quick raise of hands who has never had a single API error when calling graph, SharePoint API, anything counts, throttling 500 errors, Fabian had no errors, AC no errors. I believe you guys have never been building anything. <laughs> I see you there. Excellent. Cool. So basically, when you build apps, right, that connect to Microsoft Graph or other other APIs, once in a while you will run into errors like throttling, 500 errors, and these things are really hard to deal with. Why? Because they are they are ephemeral. Like they appear and then they're gone, and it's impossible for you to repro them, right? At least it wasn't possible until now, right? Because now we have the Microsoft Graph Developer Proxy that allows you to simulate these errors, both on Microsoft Graph, but also on any other API that you might use. And in this example, I'm gonna actually show you both, right? So right now I'm going to walk you through a simple app, right? really a web part that you can see now on a screen that shows the title of the current site using um, AirPoint REST API, and then uses Graph Me Endpoint to show info about the user that is currently authenticated right and how would that work and how would the web part behave like if it ran into uh, throttling or other errors okay so on the screen you see the web part that shows two things the title of the site and info about me the way it's built is really simple it doesn't get any easier than that right so in uh, SharePoint framework 1161 I can use the uh, Microsoft graph JavaScript SDK v3 and basically from there, I get a client. I don't need to do any auth. I get all of that already uh, for free from SPFX. And I do a simple call to endpoint me to get info about me. And I show that on a page. So this is this block, which you see here. Then on top, I show the title of the site. And I do that by calling the uh, SharePoint REST endpoint in here. I call web. And from that, I get a title. And I show this on a page. Like It all works. It doesn't get any easier than that, right? So. It works, right? Like you can ship that that production, right? What would be how would the web part work like if it would run into throttling? So let's test that. Let me start the, the Microsoft Graph Developer Roxy. And I wanna only test the four two nines, too many errors. Every error is one too many. Too many requests error, right? And I don't want to do any any mocks, and I want to be be quite certain that I will see errors, right? Because like that's what we are here for. So let me do that. Let me uh, start it, and then it's available now. And then let me start new window of Chrome, to which I can attach a proxy, right? Because if I were to uh, do that with Edge, I would need to enable it on my OS, which would mean you wouldn't be able to see anything because Teams also needs graph, right? So that wouldn't make a great demo. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Where is my window? Here's my window. Let me grab the URL. Let me paste it in from three, two, one. We should be seeing Workbench. Will we actually see anything and we won't see anything. Why? Because we are already intercepting all, all requests. And if I refresh that, maybe you will see it again. Maybe not. Let me see that. Right. So here are already errors that we intercept and we simulate 429. So the Workbench couldn't load. Well, that doesn't really help us, right? So let me adjust the proxy a little so that it will only stimulate the error on the API that 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 we want to use. And we'll we will get back to how we wanna like what ideas do we have to make it more uh or easier for you to use. So let me uh stop it here. Let me get back to the config. And in here we have the list of URLs that we monitor and here you can see we monitor all sharepoint calls well some of them are needed for the workbench to work so in this case let me just trim that down to web select right so that that would be a, that is basically the call that we do in our um uh code right and with that let me restart the proxy and i mean i run a version on which i dev which is why the config does not reload but if you grab the version that we already shipped, uh, you will have a hot reload. So if you change anything about it, you will need to restart or stop and uh, restart. Okay. All right. So we're back. Let me reload the workbench. The get client components comes through. That's perfectly fine. We have another 429, but that is irrelevant for now. And now let's add the web part to our page. Okay. So this is the web part that we have. 321. Are we getting 429s? Perfect. So we're getting a 429 on me, 
and perfectly fine, right? So this came through eventually. And here we can see in the Microsoft Graph Developer Proxy that there was uh, a request, right? We failed it with a 429, but the Microsoft Graph JavaScript SDK handles 429s for you. So in other words, in our code, if we get back to here, this is the only thing we like, we need to do anything more. This just works because that SDK handles 429s for us. So we need to do anything else. What about this call, right? So what about the SPHTTP client that we use to get the title of the site from uh, the REST API, right? That came through and I really want to see this fail. So let me reload again. And we will stay here until it will fail. There you go, it failed. It failed, we can see here. So we've got our 429 on retrieving the title of the site, undefined the code fail, and we will not recover. Why? Because SPHTTP client doesn't handle 429s on or any other errors, right? It wraps fetch with auth so that you don't need to authenticate. But other than that, you're on your own. So what would be a reasonable way for you to go about it? Well, you basically have two ways. One way is for you to kind of build something by yourself and basically like imagine that like here is a call that is uh, built with fetch, SPHTTP client reps fetch. So it's almost the, the same. So to add support for four or two nines to this, well, your fetch call would need to become something like this, right? Where you add a sleep so that, that you can uh, back off for the period of time communicated by the retry ap after a header. And then you need to like try again until the call will come through, right? So suddenly your call now becomes a bigger call and you need to kind of centralize it, think around it and so forth and so on, right? Or there's another way. You can also use PNPJS which is an SDK that calls an API and it can call graph, it can call uh, SPRS, some and so forth and so on. And it handles four to nines for you, so you don't need to do anything. So let me quickly uncomment what I need and comment what I don't need. I've got this call using uh, PNP JS to the exactly the same call, right? So here is web select title. So let me do that. Let me save it. 321, 321 is going to rebuild, recompile, reserve. Meanwhile, let me already move to Chrome. It's this one. We are on TSC, 321. Webpack, okay, we're there, okay. Refresh. Will the request come through? Well, it does come through, but there's one thing that is odd, right? So here we've got not a dollar sign, but a dollar is escape, right? So it's a percent 24, meaning proxy will always pass it through, right? Because we've adjusted that. So let me quickly get back, adjust proxies config, and also make it, okay, I want to do two things. I want to do this, and I want to do percent 24, save it. Let me quickly stop, restart. Three, two, one, we are in, back in Chrome. Let me see. And now we want to see the call to the title of the site fail. Okay, so it failed here. There, there you go, it failed. But there you go. So we have it initially, because again, as I said, PNPJS handles four to nines for you, so that, and you don't need to do anything with that, right? So in your code, all you do is you get a title of a site and there is no handling errors. Like, like all of that is already available to you for free. Right, and here you can see the first call failed. Right, we get a four to nine, and that's coming from a proxy. Right, like we modeled this error, but then there's another call, and that comes through. And as you can see here, we get the title of the site. So, the cool thing is, right, with that, you have now the ability to test all of that something that, that you couldn't do in the past, unless like you would spin up your own mock service with your own dummy data and all of that, change your code to call one endpoint versus the other. Now you don't need to change anything about your code. You can keep your code as is and simulate how it will work in production when it's under heavy load, when it's used by thousands of folks in production. You can, you can check that already on your tenant of one that everything will be fine when you ship your uh, code to production. So with that, I think I am right on time to pass it to, the, uh, to AC and VESA.
Thank you. Thank you, Waldek, on that one. Really, really cool stuff and, and a great demo as well, walking through the real. And doing always, even commenting on live demos is, is risky, So, but it all turned out fine. So really, really cool. This time cool implementation. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>